It's so cool. Look it, guys. Ben got me this thing yesterday for my for Christmas, not my birthday. It's like this cage that goes onto the the my camera. I can't really show you the backside or anything, but it has this really cool lip that I can hold on to. And like all these little ports that I can put, I can attach. trying to do different videos every day so that you guys aren't bored. I'm gonna do like a little like plan with me I guess that's what you would call it with my bullet journal. I do bullet journaling. I don't know that you guys know that. I've never done this kind of a video before so you're gonna have to bear with me but I every month I do a monthly spread and like planners for the month or like not planners trackers for the month. I kind of just set it up it's kind of like a little uh, creative outlet for me to like zone out and, and be kind of artsy and I thought I would film it so you guys could maybe I don't know follow along if you do bullet journals as well maybe you will be inspired by some of the stuff that works for me that's gonna be today's video so if this is, sounds like something that completely totally bores you just watch tomorrow's video just skip this one if you are completely unfamiliar with what a bullet journal is I'm gonna link a video down below from the creator of what bullet journaling is. It's supposed to be this analog system that's super simplified and very straightforward, not at all fancy or anything like that, and kind of like the bare bones minimum of what bullet journaling is. And then people have taken that and, t and spun it in their own artistic way. And some people do these like full pieces of art for their planners every month. But for now, I'm just gonna show you like how I structure my bullet journal or how I'm gonna design this month and then I can kind of explain how I'm gonna use that and how it works for me. This might not work for everyone either. Like the whole point about bullet journaling is to have everything in one notebook that you'll need, that you need to keep track of, that you need to remind yourself of. So like tasks, events that you have coming up, planning things, like all of that happens in one notebook. Essentially how a bullet journal works, I kind of like to think of it as like a map. Imagine that Google Maps is like your calendar and you're seeing it as a bird's eye view and then each spread that you do, like going through the, the journal, it gets more and more detailed. So like the information that you're capturing or that you're trying to like keep track of gets more and more specific. And then in between all of that, there's like different spreads that you can add depending on what your needs are. That's kind of the best general way I can explain it. So it starts off, this is kind of optional, but it's my, this is my index, where literally you write the page and the description of what, what the page is, just so that you can look back on past bullet journals if you ever wanna like reference stuff. And then you have your future log. So you're seeing everything like at a bird's eye view. I usually do six months. So I had this bullet journal started in August, or I think it was July was my first month. And so I have August, September, all the way to January 2021. And then it goes into like our monthly and everything like that, which I'm not gonna show you this whole bullet journal just because it changes every month. And to keep it simple, we're just gonna go for November month. So I kind of roughly sketched out the month and what it's gonna look like. I don't know if you guys are interested in the markers that I'm using because that's apparently a thing. I genuinely just use whatever black marker I have that works. This spread I have done many, many times before. Oh, sorry. Um, but yes, I have done this bullet journal setup many times. Like I'd say for the past like two months, I've set my month up this way and I much prefer it to other options just because I like seeing a big view of my calendar. Um, the main bullet journal method is way easier to set up than this. It usually takes me like five minutes per page. So if you're someone who doesn't have a lot of time on your hands, then 
maybe don't do this method. The other thing though, I change my bullet journal, my like monthly spread and weekly spreads depending on how much time I have. So if I don't have a lot of time to do this kind of a spread, then I won't, I won't spend the time. I'll just, uh, I'll just do like the basic method, which is like down one side of the page, you write all the numbers of the month. So like one through 30 and then all the days of the week beside it pertaining to that date. One of the biggest mistakes I made when I started my bullet journal, the first ever one that I did, was that I tried to do too much with it. So I tried to do like every single tracker that I could find because I was just so excited to create spreads. But then I didn't end up knowing how to use the bullet journal properly. It was just too much to keep track of. It was too much information and too much to like maintain every week. I would suggest just treating it like an agenda and then you can add on all of these like trackers and things. Don't worry about using a ruler for this either if you want to replicate this because obviously the lines don't have to be perfect. I just like the way it looks better when I use a ruler. Look at how pretty that looks. Okay, now I think I'm gonna do the numbers next. Which okay. camera am I looking at? Camera one or camera two? This one. Camera one. Camera two. <laughs> so right now I'm just doing the numbers in the boxes. Obviously you can see that here. Um, just excuse the beeping. Because I need to see the, my weeks and like the month in its like block format, but I don't like it when it's also including all of the like little writing of like, like in a traditional calendar setup. I'll just put a photo here. This, this is the setup that I don't like the most because there's not enough space to like write out everything. Whereas this setup is perfect for me because you can see all the numbers laid out and like the month laid out in that format. But anytime I have an event on any particular day, I write it out separately. So I don't have to worry about like wasting space. Cool. Ta-da, looks good, right? And now I'm gonna do the days of the week up here. Um, this also is, I'm not like an artist at all, <laughs> but I do like to have fun with like decorating and so it doesn't always look the best, but I love it. I think it is so much fun. Just to add some dimension, I like to use this pen, Tombow brush pen, I believe it is, Tombow, Tombow. I use it to kind of drop shadow these, these boxes. Look at how cool that looks. It just makes it pop so much more. Look at that. That is so satisfying to me. Uh, I'm gonna do this title part here. So this part I like to do, I usually do cursive first. So once I've filled that in, then I go back in after I've erased it, hold on. Then I, then I kind of go in anytime there's a down stroke, that's when I, I like thicken it a bit. That's kind of what, it's like replicating calligraphy. So I take this and I just go, oh, you really can't see what I'm doing. Could you see that? I just kind of like do that. Did you see that? Oh, focus. Like that, so there's like a gap there and then I just color it in. Okay, now this is where things get fancy. I think I'm gonna do tasks on this side and then events on this side. This is where I bring in my tape, my washi tape, but I choose different patterns and colors depending on the month so that any spread that pertains to that month gets this tape on it so I know when I'm looking at it that it's November. Here's the washi tape I'm using. I like the ripped look just because it's not very technical and it's easy to, to do multiple times. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. And also look at these these scissors I got from Michael's, which is like a craft store in Canada. Here's what I do. I like figure out where I wanna place it. I'm thinking here. And 
then I rotate this enough so I can like cut it right at the edge of the page. Like that. Anyways, and then I do the same thing with this. Oh yeah, that's better. Look at that. Look at how cute that is. This is the fun part. I get to like decorate, so I'm happy. I might add more tape later. Actually, ooh, I'm gonna do this. Yeah, that looks good. For this next part, I am going to... <sighs> Here's what I do. I usually pick colors for like brush pens that I think will go really nice. Now, for titles, I go like this. So it kind of looks like it's a paintbrush in a way. And then I'll just, in like a sort of messy cursive, I go like, I just write like that, tasks. Wow, that looks really good. I'm really impressed with myself. <laughs> Any tasks that I have for the month will go under that. And then the same thing for the other side. Uh... Ooh, that one didn't look as good. That one is a little funky. So I can see all of the dates, and then if I have an event on that day, I write the date out, and then with a little bullet point next to it, I write out what the, the event is. That is my monthly spread. So this is the trackers page. I change this every month. Sometimes I don't even include it. Sometimes I'll put it in, I'll put it in the month and then I just never end up using it. But it is something that I think is really valuable because it forces me to like keep track of things, especially if I'm trying to build a new healthy habit for myself. On this side, I'm doing an exercise tracker, something that I want to like keep in my, my routines a little bit more. Um, so this is literally all I'm doing. I draw, I'm drawing lines. I'm gonna draw all the dates from 1 to 30 on the side here. I'm gonna, I usually do color coordinated, uh, coordination, wait. I usually color coordinate with like what exercise I'm doing, whether it be like yoga or stretching or um, if I'm doing focusing on legs one day or focusing on upper body another, I'll like pertain a particular color to that particular category and then I fill it in depending on the ratio of date versus the amount of time I spent on that particular thing, if that makes sense. And then every little tick, every little um, bullet is five minutes. So five, 10, 55, 60. So right here, that's the 60 minute mark. And then here is the hour 30 mark. Okay, and then on this side is my um, expenses tracker, and I track uh, my weekly expenses pertaining to particular categories on uh, going down this way. Okay, now I'm doing categories. So this is week one. Here's what I have for my expenses page. It's pretty self-explanatory. Every week I fill in these columns. Um, and I use these categories that I wrote out here. Food, it goes food, home, business, gifts, transportation, health, office, and personal. So those are different categories that for me, I figure out how much money goes into each of those categories. Uh, and then what I do is I fill in different colors for each of those squares. Now for the title, I'm gonna do the same kind of thing that I did last time. Oh, but first I wanna fill in these. Okay, it's meant to look a little funky. Don't judge my, my handwriting. Oh, and the most important part that I forgot to mention is on each page at the bottom, you write the number 
if it doesn't already have it, um, the page number, and then you can go back in your, into your uh, index and write the page number and then what that page number is. So for me, I would write 165 to 166 is November monthly log. Ooh, I forgot my tape. Oh, I should have done this differently. It's not too late. This is, I forgot to do this for the first page as well. I like to put a little tab on the page so that I know to come back to it. But that's kind of how it looks like. So then it's like this perfect tab so that when I have the book closed, I can just go to that tab and there's my, my trackers. This little string is always for my week. So that's why I do the tab so I can flip back to it really easily. Actually, I kind of like it not having any more tape on it. I'm gonna leave it. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to add in the colors for each of these categories. And then like, hopefully I can see an array of different colors, which means I'm kind of balanced. Anyways, so yeah, that's how that works. Okay, so this spread is my social media tracker. Uh, I do the same thing every month for this. I don't change it. some tape and some decoration stuff. So the lighting is terrible right now. It is very harsh on this camera, but on this camera it looks great. So anyways, just so you can see what I'm doing. I then write the, the weeks on the top part here. This allows me to keep track of the weeks. Again, I'm very much a weekly tracker. I like to know what I need to get done for every week or what's being posted. That kind of gets put down here. And then any brand deals that I have coming up or video ideas that I want to sort of work through. If it's a more elaborate idea, it gets its own spread. But if it's something that I can just sort of jot down like what exactly I need to get captured, that gets all put down on this bottom section here. Perfect. And then I can start filling in things like, obviously for YouTube is vlog. I don't know what number it's gonna be. I think it's 30. I'm gonna fill this in later, cause <laughs> I have to like correspond it with my YouTube videos. I, I don't have that with me right now. So we're just gonna move on. Okay, so here's my dilemma. There are two spreads that I kind of interchange and gener generally they consist of me spreading the days out so they fill the entire spread which is like two separate pages. That's one option. The second option is I do my week all on one side on one page and then tasks get its, gets its own kind of page on this side. So I think I'm going to do it this way. And then to tie in the, the monthly spread, uh, I do this. I also am using uh, my, a moleskin notebook, which isn't the best for doing these kinds of thicker lines and stuff because it does bleed through, as you can kind of see. I know that some people prefer to do like really thick pages so that it's easier to do like lots of designs and stuff. I just like 
moleskin notebooks i find they last long and i actually kind of enjoy the thinness of the pages in a weird way anyways moving on now we go to the days of the week anytime i write in the day of the week it's always in block letters Okay, and then the final thing is tape. My favorite look is the kind of eclectic, ripped up paper, tape, tape, paper look. So like, I'll do that where I like rip off a piece and then I can just sort of place it. I don't know what it is, I just love that like ripped, kind of messy look. And then there, I guess, maybe here. I sometimes play with like vertical and horizontal lines, but I find it's quite jarring, so. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. Okay, there we go. There's my spread. That's my weekly spread. I'll show you guys as well, a little easier. And this fills up as the week goes on or like the start of the week, usually the Sunday before I'll overlook everything and see where I can fill in like my tasks, my events. And the difference between writing a task in the date and writing a task here is writing a task here for me is something that doesn't have to get done on a particular day but needs to get done by the end of the week. That's kind of how I, I use this, this bullet journal. And then of course my trackers I fill in as I go. And then my social media tracker is something that I turn to every week, especially when I'm planning so I can know, okay, so I need this many vlogs for this week. When can I film and edit all of those things? Where can I fit that into my schedule? And I find that this system works really well. So hopefully you enjoyed.